Good evening, hello and welcome to my project of by building a 286 machine. The machine that I had as a kid, or used as a kid, there was a family PC. And yeah, um, as you have seen in the previous episodes, I ran into a few problems um, in booting off of a compact flash card. And it turns out that probably the boards that I'm using are maybe too old to actually correctly um, control these CF cards, although they are supposed to be IDE compatible or parallel at ATA compatible. It might be that the BIOS is not doing the right things to, to actually get data off of the compact flash disk. I managed to partition and format the compact flash, especially the smaller one. At um, also a bit of luck with this one gigabyte one, but um, the older BIOSes have a limit of 504 megabytes, so that's probably where I'm hitting a limit there as well. So I decided to do another soldering project. So the nice people of the XT IDE project have created different PCBs. Um, this one here is the XT CF Lite version 4.1, which will later be able to take a CF card here. And this particular one is by Sergei Kiselev, or also known by Sergei Malinov of malinov.com. And his board is pretty, pretty nice. Um, it uses very little components. One EEPROM goes here, then a few ICs here and some switches to configure it, and also one bracket for taking up the CF card. Yeah, so I had these boards made the same way I did for the sound cards. Eisler um, is the provider here, and they, are, they make very small runs of like three PCBs for little money. And I'm pretty happy with them because they have really high quality and gold contacts and everything. So this should be a straightforward soldering job. I have sockets for all the ICs. There's a few resistor packages and a few capacitors here and there, but really not much. The hardest thing will be to solder the SMD mount CF bracket here. I never done any um, surface mount type things. So this will be quite interesting. I will try it on my own, but also a friend suggested that he might help me with his heat gun and he has some uh, definitely more experience doing that. Yeah, I will now I guess start soldering just on the sockets and all the resistor packages and resistors that I can access. There's a few capacitors here where I need to um, take out the card, all of my holder here, but that's fine. Another thing to mind will be to make the ISO bracket. I do have these blank brackets here, which look like this. And they are actually made for this, or in the other way around, the, the ISO card is made for this kind of bracket. But of course, we need to cut a hole in here, and this will be quite the job, I think. So I have to come up with an idea how to do that. Yeah, but this will be for later time. So right now I would say let's heat up the soldering iron and start putting in those IC sockets. Well, one or two things that I want to mention in between is, um, first of all, this board is really nicely layout. So all the values of the resistors and the capacitors are actually silk screened here. So R3, for example, is one kilo ohm. So you don't even need the, the documentation here. And also, on the back, 
there's the documentation for all the dip switch settings for the different um, addresses. Well, some of them you can't read because there's holes on top of that, but uh, yeah, most of them you can actually read here pretty well. And the I/O poor um, I/O addresses for the um, disk controller actually, so you can also read those. So that's very nice. Documentation on the board is always very good if you lose manuals for like the old things. And the other thing is when you do a project like this and you're a newbie like me, um, it's interesting how the packaging is for the ICs and the sockets. So ICs and sockets usually come in tubes like this, plastic tubes, uh, which protect the pins mo mostly so that they don't bend. And most of the ICs, or usually the ICs always come in um, electrostatic protective packages. So always be sure to be sort of yeah grounded, um, touch a piece of metal or something before touching the ICs. And if you wonder how to get these things out here, they usually just bend in a little bit of the plastic here. So you just simply bend it out and you can hopefully easily get the sockets out. Yeah, so I think these belong here. Yeah, seems seems fine. And always take care that the notch here actually lines with the notch, notch on the silk screen. And if the silk screen doesn't have a notch, there should be some form of um, notifying where pin 1 is, usually. If it's missing, then there's something pretty pretty wrong with this thing. And I think I already have the two sockets that I actually need. So let's continue soldering those. Alright, now we got all the sockets for the ICs and there are some new components that we didn't have so far. And these are the dip switches which come here and you can configure the I.O. address and the BIOS address using this. And yeah, they are tiny, 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 tiny switches. Very useful um, for these very low-tech things where you don't configure anything in software but everything is wired up in hardware. Yeah, very nice. And those actually go, they feed the input to the comparators, which take off the address and I.O. lines from the ISA bus and compare the value there with the configured I.O. address and BIOS address to make the card correspond to the correct signals. So very low tech, just two comparators and two dip switches. Very nice. So let's solder those in. Okay, another short interlude. I noticed that my um, solder wasn't as good as uh, it was in the projects before and I think maybe it's due to the soldering irons tip being quite dirty and oxidized. I read that it should always be very clean and the tip be nicely tinned and I think maybe this cheap Chinese soldering iron is really dating its limits now since I've been soldering for quite a few hours now but um, it came with a bunch of replacement tips so I now took a brand new blank tip which is looking nice and maybe this will help in uh, getting better results. I think you can refresh those. Um, there's supposedly some, some soldering refresher paste or something. I will probably order it from eBay or Amazon or something and try it out. But maybe, maybe, maybe uh, at some point I will need to spend more than 20 euros on 
oh, old set of soldering iron stuff and maybe the time has come for more expensive and better quality tools but so far this has helped me and done me a good job so I think it was well worth the 20 euros uh, considering all the stuff that it comes with. So yeah, um, I'm gonna continue with these resistors here and the um, capacitors and hopefully this will work better than before. So let's heat up the iron again and get started. Okay, we are up to our last three components that I have to solder. There's one LED left and two resistor packages. And of course the SMD thing, but I'm not sure if I am going to do this today. Car driving by outside. Uh, well, anyway, with the resistor packages you have to take care that they have an orientation. There is a marker for pin 1 here and there's also a dot on pin 1 on the resistor package. So make sure that you put them in the right way. Also note that there's a missing resistor here, R5, which um, Mr. Malinov said, please do not install this resistor. So it seems to be not needed or maybe even harmful. Okay, let's put in the last three components. <laughs> Well, that's about it. Um, all the components are installed. All that's left to do is to install the ICs in the sockets and solar that stupid CF card socket. I'm wondering if I should do this by myself or wait for my colleague and friend to do that for me. Well, maybe I'll try the next one. I have another board because I have to order three ones from Isla, so maybe I'll try it myself the next time and I'll just put in the sockets and I'll call it a day because it's already getting late. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, in the next episode we will take a look how this whole thing turned out and we will install it in the 286 and try to get it to run. We have to flash the EEPROM with a little tool and uh, also choose the correct settings for the dip switches and then we will hope for the best that this whole thing will work. So long, um, I would say have a nice evening. Share, like and subscribe if you want as usual. And see you next time. <laughs>